Hey guys, I have a package from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff that I wanted to open with you guys today. So let's find out what's in the box. I really don't know why we needed that huge box for the watercolors, but hey, that's where we're at. Now, something I do like about Cheap Joe's is they provide an itemized receipt that includes your payment type, it includes what you ordered, it includes what you paid, and it includes the total. I really appreciate that, especially because so many companies think we don't need this. I really want that printed out itemized receipt. It makes it so much easier for me to do these videos so I don't have to look things up again. I super appreciate that Cheap Joe's has done this. It also makes it a little bit easier for me to be able to get the prices for you guys, which is important. So what do we have here? We have a thank you for being a customer card. And we have some watercolor all wrapped up. So I will free it from its bubble wrap constraints. They did a really nice job packaging this, minus that ginormous box. Okay, and we also have, so we're gonna talk about the bonus first, and then we're gonna talk about everything else. We have a little envelope from Windsor Newton here, and inside is a, they did such a good job packaging it but I, that I can't get it out it a little bit we have some samples of their new metallic watercolors which works out so well for me because now it means I don't have to buy the whole dang thing just to see if I like it companies seem like they're moving away from samples and I wish they wouldn't because I love me some samples and this was included in my order and I greatly appreciate it we also have our regular tubes of watercolor paint we have Da Vinci Artemis, which is a color that I've been wanting for a while. We have some Cheap Joe's American Journey paints. We have the Taylor's Flamingo Pink. We have June Bug. We have Moon Glow. We have Ward Jean's Dusty Green. I'll talk about that in a minute. We have Blue Stone. And we have Jane, Janet's Violet Rose. And this totally got sold to me during the two minute art tip that Cheap Joe's records, I fell in love with it. So uh, if y'all are ever wondering if those do any good, and I'm sure you don't wonder that, but you sold me on this. I liked what I saw in the demonstration. And that kind of just goes to show you guys that I am very easily influenced and pretty things definitely appeal to me. So what I wanna do with you guys today is we're gonna go ahead and swatch all of this together. I'm gonna start out by swatching what is already ready for us, the Windsor & Newton Cotman Metallics. Now these are available in half pan sets and tubes. They're not currently, to my knowledge, available open stock. Since they are Cotman, they are student grade, which considering these are like iridescents, that doesn't surprise me. That tends to just be a little bit lower on the price range. What I like about this card is that it has the color like I guess designators as well as the transparency and the color name and so I guess S would be series two these all look to be series two they don't include pigment though which is kind of a shame so I have a cup of clean water and I am just going to start swatching I thought these were going to activate a lot quicker than they are so I'm actually gonna pre-activate them a little bit and see if we can't get any movement. All right, hopefully these start to move because they've had a few seconds to sink in. Really not getting much movement. If this is indicative of the quality of these paints, I am so glad I didn't buy them. 
see, this is why I think companies are moving away from samples, is when they have an unimpressive subpar product, they don't necessarily want you to know. But as a reviewer, samples, even if I had to pay for the samples, would be a really economical way to do what I do because we could do like big batches of samples and then I could buy the ones that are much more promising after I get a chance to actually play with them and then we could just focus on the good instead of wasting so much money on the mediocre yeah I really I really thought these were going <laughs> especially since Gottman sent out the sample cards because it's not just Cheap Joe's offering these, like Plaza is also offering these. Um, so I'm assuming Cotman, obviously it's on their letterhead, is sending these out and asking companies to distribute these with orders. And these are just really, for metallics, they're so sad, especially for how much Cotman wants for these. Because they sell them at Michael's and I've eyeballed them numerous times. I'm so glad I didn't waste my money on this. I mean, maybe maybe these are like just a bad batch, bad dots. But then that would also tell you that the tube ones are not, you can't set them up in half pans. They're not going to reactivate very well. I mean, some of these did okay. But the blue and the gold and the silver are just embarrassingly bad. This is why I do the like dry half pan tests when I review watercolors because I like to work from half pans and I find it economical to fill them from tubes and uh, look, this is, just, this is embarrassing. We shouldn't be seeing much of the dot at all because these aren't necessarily staining colors. So uh, Cotman, you missed the mark on this one, but I sure do appreciate you sending me the sample so I could find that out. I'm going to set these little disappointments aside to dry and then we can move on to the One Da Vinci and the Six American Journey. And I don't think I've ever reviewed American Journey for you guys here, but we've talked about Da Vinci a lot. I really like Da Vinci watercolors. One of my favorite palettes is the Da Vinci mixing set. I refilled it a few times. I really like them. So for this, I was just going with watercolors that I knew that I would enjoy working with across the streams a little bit here I have a scrap of Blick cotton rag watercolor paper and I thought it would be a good use case for it and let's go ahead and start with the Da Vinci Artemis and this is one of their super granulating colors they don't have like a huge range of them the way Schmincke does and some of them, the ones I really, really want, I can only get in sets and I'm not necessarily looking to acquire more sets. I just wanted like that specific color. So they have some really pretty ones that I'll probably never really get a hold of because I'm not necessarily, unless they make smaller sets or sets of just their granulating colors, it just doesn't seem that feasible for me. So it has a light fast rating. It looks like of one, unless there's something behind the colon. It says it's excellent, it is staining and semi-transparent, and it uses the pigments PG-18, Viridian Green, PB-29, Ultramarine Blue, PR-177, Anthroquinone Red. And like everything, it will probably give you cancer. And another cool thing about Da Vinci paints is that they are made in the U.S., Went ahead and uncapped it. No weird explodies, which is good to see. So I'm going to do a mass tone swatch. And then I'm going to do a wet into wet sort of swatch. That way we can really, if there's like loads of granulation, we can really see it. So then we're going to move on to the American journey. Let's start with Taylor's Flamingo Pink. So it has a light fast, light fast rating of two. Very good. It is staining and somewhat opaque. It uses PV19, quinacridone violet, PW6, titanium dioxide. So it's a violet 
and a white. So this is going to end up in the Naomi palette probably since it's a kind of opaque color and that means it requires a little bit of special handling. Again, no exploding. And the gum Arabic didn't get like too out of control, which is good to see. I can definitely see that it's got some opacity to it. Let's see what happens when we add a good amount of water. Just see if it granulates out. So that is Taylor's Flamingo Pink. Next, we're gonna do Janet's Violet Rose. This is one of the smaller tubes, the eight milliliter tubes, but they're still pretty big tubes. This has a light fast rating of one excellent. It uses PR202, PV14, and PW6. This is another one that could maybe give us cancer due to cobalt. And it should have a little bit of opacity to it just because of the white in it. Again, no exploding and no weird oversaturate uh, separation of the gum arabic. So that's nice. This is a really pretty color. Kind of mauve, but it's going to go in the Naomi palette as well. Because of that opacity, it's just a reminder that I need to handle them a little bit differently and can't really use it as a good mixing color the way I would use something in my Daily Driver palette. One of these days, one of these days, I'm going to make the switch and make a really big 100 pan palette and I just have to screw up the courage to do it. I already know how I want to do it. I already have the tin I want to put it in. It's getting used to a new thing that is scary for me. I have a hard time with that. Let's move on to Blue Stone, our other eight millimeter tube. It has a light fast rating of two, very good. It contains PB36 and PY42. So we've got a blue and a yellow in there. This is another one that could give us cancer because of cobalt. And this is why I recommend that if you're buying watercolors for very young kids, don't go with professional, don't share your professional grade paints if you can help it because a lot of these can be kind of dangerous. And uh, when we were doing Gyotaku, which is the fish printing, we had 12 year olds literally covering their hands in the paint because they were bored. So, and they were working with like tempera child safe paint. So we did the mass tone swatch and now I'm doing the wet into wet granulating swatch and we'll see if we get any color separation out of June bug. So no, no blue stone. Sorry. Now we'll move on to June bug. It's another 15 milliliter tube. It has a light fast rating of two. It is staining and transparent. It contains PB27, Prussian blue, PG7, phthalo cyanine green, and it is a cooler color. So it seems like their 15 milliliter tubes not only tell you what pigments are in it, but what pig, like, so different pigments can have different expressions. They can make different colors. So it's cool that they're actually explaining what expression the color is giving you. So here, ooh, that is such a pretty sort of teal color. I can see why it's staining. And let's see, it's a Prussian blue and a cyan. So you're gonna get, this would be really nice for botanical painting. And while I don't think this is necessary because I don't think it's gonna granulate out in a particularly interesting way, Let's do the wet into wet and see. Next, we're going to move on to Moon Glow, which I assume is pretty similar to Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. And I may need to pull out my Daniel Smith Moon Glow so we can do a head to head comparison. So this is staining, semi-transparent and cool. It uses 
Let me fix that for you guys. PG-18 Viridian, PB-29 Ultramarine Blue, and PR-177 Anthroquinone Red. This is another one that could give you cancer because it's got trace amounts of lead and it can cause reproductive harm. So I guess you should not use this if you are pregnant or probably nursing. Again, no explosions. I do appreciate the warnings. I'm not actually making fun of the warnings. I think being open about that is really important. It allows people to make informed choices about their health. I've probably told you guys this story before, but I had a printmaking teacher who had heavy metal poisoning and she would show us how her nails were like pliable like rubber and it had caused like just severe health issues for her. And that came from years of printmaking techniques that have really dangerous chemicals and just not proper ventilation and not proper containment and just people didn't know. So that left a really, really big mark on me. So that was Moon Glow. And then finally, we have Ward Jeans, Ward Jens, Dusty Green. This is a Series 5. It, ha it is two stars of light fastness or two bars of light fastness. Very good. It is staining opaque and warm. It uses PB36 cerulean blue, chromium oxides of cobalt and aluminum, PG7 thalo cyanine green, PW6, so that would be some of the opacity, titanium dioxide, PO62 <laughs> benzimidolone. Wow, I ruined that word. I am so sorry. Orange. And this contains cobalt. And we've got a bobalt down on the floor. He thinks it's time to eat. Again, no explosions. I'm gonna do the mass tone or, you know, attempt a mass tone swatch, mass tony. Could be my mascot if Bully wasn't my mascot. And then our wet into wet. And we'll see what we get as that dries. So I am going to go, that was War Jeans, Dusty Green. I have to assume, with the way they've worded it, that green has to rhyme with jean, right? Um, I'm going to go grab Moon Glow from Daniel Smith. Actually, another interesting thing is that Artemis is that sort of color too. So we're gonna go grab Moon Glow and I'll be right back. So here is my tiny, probably on its way out tube of Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. I'm gonna do the same cheaty little test that I did where I just basically dab it in. Actually, their Moon Glow is already much cooler than Artemis and then American Journeys Moon Glow. So it looks like same name, kind of different color. Trying to get enough on there for you guys to be able to see. Yeah, I think those are di very different colors actually. That's kind of cool. And Bluestone ended up granulating out some, so we can see some of the green as well as some of the blue. That's pretty. And Junebug, I'm not seeing any unique granulation, but that doesn't mean there isn't any. It needs to dry fully before we can really determine that. And you guys know me, I am a sucker for the hyperlapse dry time. So what I think is kind of neat, at least from these swatches, is that Artemis is a little bit different from American Journey's Moon Glow, which is pretty different from Daniel Smith's Moon Glow. Daniel Smith's Moon Glow feels a little bit more granulating and a little bit cooler than American Journey's Moon Glow. But if you're looking for something that kind of hits the same notes, Artemis and American Journey's uh, moon glow would both work pretty well for this. 
I really like the blue and green granulation in bluestone and I think Ward Jean's Dusty Green is really pretty. It kind of reminds me of Schmincke's Shire granulating color. So if you can't get a hold of Schmincke or you find Schmincke to be just too expensive, Ward Jean's Dusty Green could be a good sub for that. And you also, even in the mass tone, you can see the blues and the oranges in it, which is really pretty. Now, as for our Cotman, these are so underwhelming. These are just kind of, kind of ridiculous. Like, not, not great, you know? Like, you can get cheaper iridescent watercolors out there, cheaper metallic watercolors out there that might handle better. The grabby watercolors are coming to mind. Or you can get the fine tech, which I think are just really, really good metallic watercolors. They're a little more expensive, but they're going to last you a lot longer and you're going to get a lot more color payoff than you would with these. These feel kind of weak. So I could see you using up a lot more paint just to try to get the same sort of buildup. So thank you, Windsor and Newton, for the sample that allowed me to decide that these are not for me and we don't have to dedicate a full review to that. I really appreciate you guys helping me unbox and swatch some watercolors from Cheap Joe's. I had fun doing it and I hope you guys discovered some colors that you like or maybe some watercolors that you can definitely live without. I'm going to go ahead and decant all of these into half pans and put them in their respective palettes. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. It was a pleasure hanging out with you guys. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. If you're new around here, it would also mean the world to me if you took a moment to click that subscribe button and hit that bell notification and let YouTube know that you want to hear more from me in the future. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you guys again really soon. Bye!